Once upon a time, ugh, such a cliche. It's a term used to mystify children and to get them excited for a story. Not as excited as I am to be in this class. Not. Usually it means a happy story with a happily ever after. Math does not make me happy. At least candy does. Anyway, I wish life could be like that. volunteer if you can call working against your will volunteering. I volunteer at a local hospital in Baltimore. Mom says it will look good on my college applications, but I think she just wants me out of the house. And we all know I could be in bed sleeping. But I met a friend. Well, kind of. I guess you'd call her a friend. Let's just say acquaintance for now. What's she doing? to bother you. You just, you look lonely and I thought you'd be his friend. Um, um, nah. I'm okay actually, but thanks so. Well, at least I tried. Well, at least I tried. Well, I guess you did. You're supposed to be handing out dinners to the patients. Get going. Aging Nurse Dawson. Nurse Dawson, you're needed in the West Wing. Can you pass them out to the rest of the patients? They need me in the West Wing. Elizabeth. Hey. Great, you've got most of the patients. That's awesome. Sorry I had to leave you, but we lost a patient today. He was just in the bathroom. Hello, Evie. I had your dinner, and uh, somebody will be back here in 30 minutes to check on you. Just make sure you're breathing, all right? How did everything go? I'm sorry I had to leave you. Um, it went all right. Mrs. Jenkins is in a really bad mood today, though. She didn't eat anything. I mean, you can't blame the woman. She's been here for months. <laughs> um, Nurse Austin, do you think I could talk to you about something? Just one second. Hi. Thank you. What's up, Elizabeth? What's the deal with that Evie girl? Has she been here long? You, you know we can't talk about those things due to the HIPAA laws. You've learned that in orientation. Uh, I, just, I was just wondering if you could tell me anything about her. The one thing I can tell you is she loves to write. And I don't know what she writes about, but she's always writing. And I actually take some of her journals away. Why would you do that? I mean, if she does it all the time, she's got to like it. I mean, obviously, but... She wasn't socializing, and I felt maybe taking away her books, she would socialize a little more, but... Has it helped? It has not. 
she just finds another book and starts writing in it anyway. I, it's, I, there's no way really to stop it. In that case, do you think maybe I could give some of them back to her? Make her promise not to write these all the time. And she needs her sleep. And tell her to socialize a little more. Okay. Thanks. I will. Thank you. Have a good one, Elizabeth. Paging Dr. Bacaglia. Call 198 Dr. Bacaglia. Once upon a time, there was a girl who traveled all around the world. She went to Paris and climbed the Eiffel Tower. She went to India and rode the elephants. Then she went to the rainforest and became friends with all of the monkeys. There was nothing she couldn't do. So the next day, after I got home from school, there was a present on my bed. It was this beautiful notebook, and inside the cover, my dad had written, To the one with true imagination, may all your dreams come true. Love, Daddy. So then, during my spare time, I I'd write about anything, really. Then, just a few months after my 10th birthday, I had my first asthma attack. But, um, I don't really like to talk about it. Since that day, my parents wouldn't let me outside. They decided to homeschool me. They were always worried that I'd have another asthma attack. I wasn't allowed to see any of my friends. All I had were my stories. Mimi, I'm, I'm so sorry. It's whatever. I, I got used to it pretty quickly. Would you mind if I took one of your notebooks home tonight? I'd come back later in the week and I could give it back to you then. Be my guest. I'm sorry, Elizabeth, but maybe we need some sleep now. It's Evie. Oh, um, that's okay. I have to go home anyways, but I will be back in a few days. Valentino to the OR, please. Um, what is this? A notebook? I know it's a notebook. Okay. I thought you wrote stories in your notebooks. I do write stories. About the phosphorus cycle? No, not usually. So, what is this? A notebook? I know it's a notebook. And I don't think I understand you. What? I thought I was getting a notebook with your stories in it. I never said that. Here's your notebook back. I guess I'll see you around. Wait. Why? I didn't know if I could <clears throat> trust you. Most people who want my notebooks just end up taking them and never bringing them back. Well, I told you I would bring it back. I know. I, I just wanted a real friend. So what 
do you write stories about? About everything. Except the phosphorus cycle. <laughs> I didn't even know I took notes on this. I'm pretty sure I was sleeping when I was supposed to be learning. Yeah, I don't really pay that much attention to it either. Well, it's kind of hard when you're a class of one. Sometimes I wish I knew it would be like to a class with actual students. Story time. You sure? Yeah. Jill finally paused and stopped pacing. She turned to look at her best friend, who had been sitting there on the bed, watching her with a rather amused look. You, Jill said, pointing at Natalie, don't you laugh at me. <laughs> well, it's kind of hard not to, Natalie said through her laughs. Dude, you are just head over heels for this guy. Jill's eyes looked pleading, but she broke into a grin. Do you need to go somewhere? No, oh, no, no. I was just checking to see if this guy texted me. Okay. Elizabeth! Jeez, how does she always manage to find me? Probably the same way she always finds my notebooks. Magic. I wouldn't be surprised. You know, I think I should go before she finds me and makes me do some work. Do you want to read the rest of this? Oh, yeah, sure. One second. Thank you. Hey. Yeah, no problem. Hey, Ellie, what's up? Yeah, well, my mom isn't going to be home later, so I stopped and got myself a frappuccino. Ruin my dinner? Seriously, who are you, my mother? Anyway, what were you going to tell me earlier? Wait, so there's a party at Sam's house. And Mark Andrews is gonna be there? Wait, seriously? Yes, I am so in. I'm so excited for this. Okay, yeah, no, I'm gonna leave now, but I will see you really soon. Okay. Okay, bye.
Why do I take away your notebooks when you get enough sleep? But I did sleep last night. You say so? I do. Arm. So what are you writing in those notebooks these days? Just stuff. Stuff about love and adventure. Not that kind of stuff. I'm sure it's interesting. Baby. You know you should write. It makes you feel better. Always does. Evangeline. Paging Dr. Anderson to the fourth floor east wing. in about 20 minutes. I have something important to tell you. Hey, Elizabeth. Hey. Thanks for waiting. Yeah, no problem. So where's Evie? Did she change rooms? Because she gave me this notebook and it had probably one of the best stories I've ever read. Elizabeth. Or wait, was she discharged? Do you have like a floating Elizabeth. address? Because that story was amazing and I think Elizabeth. Love to tell Evie's passed away. What? 
she couldn't hold on any longer. I mean, you've been gone for two months. I'm so sorry. She wanted you to have this. I don't know what's in it, but like I said before, a girl loves to write. So wait, they didn't even card you? Nope, they just let me in. Well, you look older. Maybe they thought you were 21. I doubt it. You know Nelson with the baby face? Mm -hmm. They even let him in. Are you yeah. serious? Dead serious. Trust me, next time I can get you one. Hey Liz, are you alright? You're looking a little off. What? Oh, um, fine. Hey, you guys mind waiting here for a second? I just want to wash my hands for you. Yeah, we can wait. So wait. They didn't card you at all? Nope. Oh my god. It's probably just like an off night or something. Do we talk about anything other than the like, is there anything else to talk about? Chill out. Okay. Yeah, you're so chill. You're a cool cucumber. <laughs> Did you really just say that? I think I'm wildly friends. <laughs> yeah, okay. You know I do. Seems like Liz has been in the bathroom for a really long time. Someone should go check. Go ahead, go check on her. Can't go with her. Got it. All right, I'll go check on her. Liz? Oh my god, guys, come here. What, what is it? Now. You okay? Oh my god, Liz. What happened? Is she okay? I don't oh know. God. Did she hit her head? Maybe, but there's no blood on the floor, so. Oh my Liz, god. Wake up. Liz? Someone call 911. Lizzie. Liz. 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 Hello? Yes, I'm at, um, I'm at North Clearview High School. My friend passed out on the, on the bathroom floor. Her, na her name is Elizabeth Bennett. Now when we get home, I want you to clean your stuff out of the kitchen. I have clients coming for drinks tomorrow and I really want to make sure I get that clean tonight. I did clean my stuff out of the kitchen. So that isn't your laundry I saw by the sink this morning, or your shoes by the back door? No. Okay, fine. The clothes are probably mine, but those shoes definitely aren't. I wouldn't wear them. They're your, like, pointy ones, you know, that make you look like a witch. You need, like, a hat and a broomstick when you wear them. Elizabeth? Fine. I will clean my stuff out of the kitchen when we get home, okay? Thank you. And while I have you here, I think you really need to look into the getting that internship at my office. It's going to look great and wonderful on your resume, and you really need to do that. Hello, I'm uh, Dr. Jones. Delighted to meet you. Nice to meet you. As Elizabeth. All right. I'm glad you've come into the office. And Thank you for meeting us. Elizabeth, I'm glad you've come in. I wanted to review the results of the CAT scan you had from your visit to ER earlier this week. Um, I reviewed this with a radiologist and consulted with a neuro-oncologist, and they agreed that your scans show you have a tumor, which is what we call a glioblastoma. What does that even mean? Well, glioblastoma is a grade for astrocytoma, which means that it's a tumor, it grows rapidly, and depending on where it's located, um, it can cause all the symptoms that you've been having. Wait, I haven't been having any symptoms. Uh, oh, well, by taking a look at your um, chart, uh, when you got your scan, the radiologist noted that you said you've been having some headaches, been feeling tired a lot recently. Is that correct? 
Yeah, but I mean, I thought that was from the park. The other, the work I've been doing. Okay, wait, so what does this mean? Like, I need chemo, radiation, and we're all good, right? Uh, in cases like Elizabeth's, um, we usually have to start with surgery. Like, brain surgery? Oh, I have to go to the bathroom. You were saying? I want to put you in touch with Dr. Reed in neuro neurology. Um, this is his specialty, and he'll have much more information and be able to help you. Uh, I think you'll know a lot more about what Elizabeth's future will hold. Uh, also, there are support groups for the family and Elizabeth. I really think you should, your husband, and you should think about attending. I've got a flyer. There are great resources in these situations. She will have the surgery and do whatever needs to be done. Okay, that's good. I'm glad to hear that. That will definitely prolong her life. Prolong? For how long? Well, given the tumor's type, size, location, and grade, we estimate that she's got about a year. Elizabeth. Hmm. Elizabeth. What? Do you mind holding these while I drive, please? What? Oh, yeah. Elizabeth. Mom, I told you I would put away my clothes when we got home. That's not what I was going to say. Well, what were you going to say? We really need to talk about this. Why? We never talk about anything else. That's not true. Yes, it is. The only time we ever talk is when you leave me a note on the countertop telling me that you're not going to be home for dinner because you're working late. Well, work's been really, really busy lately. That's not the point. <sighs> Elizabeth, I'm worried. Worried? You're never worried. What are you doing? Elizabeth, it's more serious than you realize. I have something in my head that needs to be cut out. So what? We're going to Paris. Yeah, right. You know, Mom, I swear, you're, you're hilarious. You always go on the best business trips, and you know how much I wanted to go to Paris. So, I mean, have a really great time while you're there. Get me a postcard while no. you're on. We're going to Paris. We can't do that. You have work. You always work. I'm, I'm going to take some time off. What? Lizzie. No. No, no, you can't. You can't take time off. You have drinks with clients. That you have. That you have to do that. My clients and work will wait. No, you know what? I, I just, I can't be here right now. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm busy. I'll meet you at home.
with her brown hair blowing in the wind, Elizabeth turned to look at the Eiffel Tower.